Hi everyone, welcome to Code Dojo. In today's video, I'll be showing you on how to get started with XRM Toolbox. Uh, first thing that you'll probably need to do when starting out with XRM Toolbox is to head over to their site. Site looks. I have the site already open. As you can see there, it's the official XRM Toolbox site, uh, the ultimate set of tools from Microsoft for Microsoft uh, Dataverse. You click on the download latest version. Once it is downloaded, it goes into your downloads folder. I have it already here in my downloads folder. You probably need to extract it. And when you extract it, it goes into its own XRM toolbox folder there by default. Scroll down all the way down until you see xrmtoolbox.exe like the one I've highlighted there. And once you see that, because there's not actually a setup file where you double click and you go through the normal install, this doesn't actually go in to your uh, application folder within Windows. It actually is an executable application with a couple of DLLs which actually are plugins for some of them and some of them are actually building functionality for connectivity to your dataverse. I'm just gonna open it for the first time. It does take a couple of seconds. A few moments later so that's that will be your home screen or your start page of your XRM toolbox. The first thing that you'll probably need to do when you get into this uh, stage here, it's probably to head over to tools. Tools is actually where you can see all the things that are pre-installed, uh, which are the plugins. Uh, we it does come through with a couple of plugins that are pre-installed. So in case you click on the window there and then you go back to your start page and then look on your right side there should be somewhere where it says open tools library you click on the tools library when you click on the tools library this is like a mini uh, app store if i can put it that way it's actually a store for all your plugins it's a repository for all your plugins and then these are the plugins which uh, have not been installed and the ones that have been installed are the ones with the green ticks here and when it comes to updates as well it's going to show you from the same page as well and when you need to uninstall them as well you can uninstall them from the same page so i'm just going to go through and then uh, search for my xrm it's not actually XRM, it's actually fetch uh, XML. And then it auto filters, as you can see there. But if you want to go further, you can say XML builder, and then it filters it. Oh, that's not builder. It's missing a D. Okay. It filters it through. And you can see it doesn't have a green dot there or a green tick. So I can actually click on it and then install it or if i want more tools like the data migration tool which is a key one as well when you're migrating data across environments i'm gonna select that as well so i can actually bulk update or bulk import data or migrate data from one environment to another or one database in uh, instance to another so i'm just gonna install these two uh, at the moment and it says cool uh, you show you want to install two tools Yes, I'm very sure. Now it's in the process of installing and it's very quick. As you can see, it says installing, cool, everything looks green chat. I'm gonna click on that. And then we go back to our tools here. You will see now when I do fetch, it pre-filters it. So I can actually click on it. And then the key thing that you'll need to do once this is done, it will be for you to actually go in and say uh, create a new connection or you can actually even click on connections there when you click on connection it's going to bring up the same window that you're going to see when i click yes here cool so now it has brought up the connections page and when it brings up the connection page i click on new connection cool and then uh, click on the green one, I prefer to click on the green one, but depending on your uh, setup or your authentication setup, you can click any one of these using certificates or OAuth 
or client ID on a secret or a connection string. Click on connection, connection wizard. So I'm gonna type in my clients one for now. Click on next, it's gonna require a password or a username. So I'm gonna provide a username and a password. Uh, you're gonna click next. And what it's trying to do is or trying to authenticate you. Cool, I have given it access saying that it's me. So what it's trying to do now is trying to get all the tenants, all the tenants that I have access to. Cool. Now it says cool. You've got everything. Everything is validated. I'm just gonna call it demo connection. So you'll need to give it a name. And with that comes the customization part of this as well, because you can have uh, where you're working with different connections and different environments. You can actually customize it with different colors so that you can differentiate between them when you're working so that you do not make mistakes of moving data from one tenant into another where you're not supposed to put it. So in this one, I'm gonna say uh, set highlight color, I'm gonna say this is a custom one, which you're gonna uh, choose blue, for instance there. Cool, now there's my color. And then you can put a little bit of some text there uh, to just uh, highlight over what it is. It's a demo uh, XRM toolbox. Or if you don't want to use this color, you can actually use the theme that you have set up for. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna go with blue. And I click on OK. And I say it's finished. Cool. Now this is just a welcome page for my XRM builder. XML builder. I don't know why I keep on saying that. So the color that we chose, as you can see now, is putting this big border around the component or the plugin. So the color that we chose when we were customizing, as you can see here, big border around it, uh, so that you do not mistake it for another tenant. And then it shows you as well there, where it says demo XRM toolbox tenant. So I don't have any issues. So the reason why I recommend people to install this, as you might have noticed that we no longer have the default uh, advanced find within Dynamics. And then our go-to as developers or as customizers would be to come in to the XML Builder. The XML Builder gives us similar functionality or even more power as to what we were doing before with advanced find. So I'm just going to take you through an example uh, where you would normally do your ex advanced find. Cool. I want to see all the contacts uh, where if I right click on it and say filter, it's going to give me a condition. And with this, and you'll notice when I click on the view at menu there, I can say XML. What it does is building the XML for me in the background. So I don't actually need to go and write it manually. If I click on that, uh, highlight on the condition, as you can see that it has an exclamation mark. And here as well, I can choose if it's coming from another related entity, but we're working with one entity, hence there it's actually empty. I click on attributes there. Oh, I actually said contact. Uh, live update. What live update does, it actually takes you to update this view and this view at the same time. So now if I move over, you'll see that because I changed it before, it doesn't update it immediately. So now I'm going to try to remove that S there. Or look under here, you'll see the correct one is actually contact. Let's go back to our condition and choose attributes. Now the attributes come through. Let me just say, I want to see where the full name uh, is actually populated. Let's say full name. Click on that. I'm not going to do a complicated one. I'm saying uh, not 
now or contains. Not now. There we have now. What that actually means in SQL is just saying that go to this table called contact and look or select where the attribute for full name uh, is not now. That's all it's saying there. If I say execute, it's going to go into fetch XML and get me the top 50 records. But if you click on If you click on convert there, you can actually convert it to a SQL query uh, like that. So for those who actually understand SQL more, that's how it is actually building your query in the back end or actually convert it into a Power Automate parameters where you'll see here on how it is structuring it. Or you can actually go further and say, cool, I want to call this within an API. So let me use all data. Uh, let me do that. Once I click that, you see down here, it pops this window here. And then you can click on this window to actually take you through to your browser and see how your results will look like. You'll see that's the URL that would actually pop there. And then now uh, I'm going to go in and say, cool, I want to write this query actually in JavaScript or use it in JavaScript. Once I click on that, you see what it does there. It tries a little bit of a snippet for us to actually just copy and then paste it within our JavaScript and call it the way it is here because we have already built a query for it. And that's it for today. Catch us next time when we show you more tools on how to improve your workflow with Dynamics.